Okay, so why traffic is not your problem, and I'm gonna show you how to profit hack the traffic that you are already getting. Okay, because you guys are running traffic, you're, whether it's to an affiliate offer, to a, a Shopify store, to a funnel, to whatever, you're running traffic, okay? And you're trying to convert. You may be making some sales, but you're probably not making enough sales, because if you were, you might not be in this room, you'd be on your island somewhere, right? So since we want to make more sales, I'm going to show you how to profit hack what you're already doing and get jumped in. So real quick, on me, Chris talked a little bit about it. I won't go into too much on that, but family is my world, okay? It's the whole reason that I'm in business. And the reason I even talk about this, one, because I can't help but show pictures of my adorable kids, because my kids are freaking cute as hell. Um, this is Peyton. She's wearing makeup. Uh, I don't like that, but it was her dance recital. She's five. And uh, then there's Paxton, who's, uh, this is my favorite picture. He's now one and walking around, running, he's running, but that's just my favorite picture. But anyway, the reason I do what I do is not for, okay? M money doesn't do anything for you. The thing we're trying to make in business when we're trying to make money and do all this stuff, but the real reason we're doing it, in my case, is for that, is for my family. I don't care about how much money's in the bank account. I care what that money can do for my family in terms of a lifestyle and security. And, what I want to impress upon you with that is that if you are doing this just for the love of money or for the chasing of money, you're doing it for the wrong reasons and business will be so much more of a struggle for you because you don't have anything deep that actually makes it worth fighting for because money is not worth fighting for, okay? It's something deeper than that. I'm not a woo-woo guy. I'm not a big, you know, personal development rah-rah guy, but that is the truth. Business will be a whole lot easier if you have a burning desire that is actually fueled by something that's truly important in your life. When I wake up in the morning, I know that's what I'm doing. Okay, so am I qualified? Whoop, it went too fast, huh? No, I'm not, but I did write a book. And I think that's why Chris had me down here, was because I have a big old thick book that makes it look like I'm an expert. Okay, so if you guys haven't read this book, you can grab it on Amazon. It is kind of become the Bible of e-commerce. Now, my business would do better if I just had more traffic. You guys can relate to that, right? I've done it, I still say that. I catch myself saying that a lot of the time. Man, if we just had more traffic, we'd be making double the sales or whatever. And you know what, honestly, it's usually not the case. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna talk to you about what you don't know about traffic and really point out some glaring holes of inconsistencies you're probably not paying attention to so that we can then go, oh man, I'm wasting so much of the traffic that I'm already getting, how, and then I'm gonna show you how we can get around that, okay? Okay, I'm just gonna use that screen. So 70% of the traffic that visits your site leaves without doing anything. These are global averages that I'm gonna be giving you. This is called a bounce rate, right? 70% of the traffic is going to leave your site. So you get 100 people to your website that you paid a dollar a click for, paid 100 bucks to get them there, 70 of them at least, if not more, are gonna bounce. They're gonna leave but without doing anything within a few seconds. Okay, now in Shopify's case, all, the stem of the standard themes have an 85 to 90% bounce rate out of the cart, out of the box. So you're losing a vast majority of your stuff. Now, of the traffic that does stay on your site, that remaining 30%, that 30 clicks, 84%, again, global averages, are going to leave after looking at a product they're interested in. Okay, this is considered page abandonment, okay, product page abandonment. 8.5% will add the product to their cart and never check out. Okay, this is shopping cart abandonment, right? 5% will add the cart or the product to the cart, they'll start filling out their payment details, and then they're going to abandon the checkout. All right, so. What we have right here is a whole lot of loss, right? Now, 2.5% on average, and I am being incredibly generous here because I'm averaging in sales funnels, will actually complete the purchase. Most Shopify stores, most e-commerce stores globally have a one to one and a half percent conversion rate before optimization. And optimization is not necessarily as easy as some people think, okay? So you spent $100 to get 100 people to your website but only 2.5% of 30%, cut down by 84, cut down by 8.5, cut down 0.5, that little tiny fraction are actually going to complete the checkout. How many of you guys want more traffic now? No, now you're like, crap, I don't want any traffic. This is expensive, right? This is what we're gonna talk about, okay? This is why people don't pay attention to. Now, if you look at all of this stuff right here, 
Some of you are like, well, uh, yeah, I, have, I use abandonment protector or I use cart hook. Yeah, okay, cool. You're talking about one little step out of a huge river of loss. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to get into fixing this. Now, a few more statistics just because I want to really beat this home. 99%, again, global averages will not buy on the first visit, okay? 75% have an intent to return, okay? This is the people that where life happens, right? How many of you guys have ever been shopping online, you add something to your cart, and then the phone rings? Or then your kid screams, or you gotta change a diaper, or the boss says, get off your computer, get back to work, right? Something happens, life gets in the way and you don't complete your purchase. Or you just add it to cart knowing that you wanna check Amazon, or you wanna check another site before you actually purchase. These people have intention to return. Now, you guys are, part of that 75%. How many of you guys have ever done this thing called forgetting? <laughs> ever, right, yeah, exactly. I forget all the time. So you had the intent to go back and buy that widget because you forgot, okay? Now 25% of these people, they're, they're out, they're just not interested, they're not the right fit at the right time. Now there's four factors of these people that are going to affect your sales. So we have the bounce rate, okay? People who hit your page and bounce. Okay, this is basically that 70%. We have product page abandonment. These are the people that make it to a product listing page or a category product page, and then they bounce. Or this, if this is a sales funnel, they hit make it to your sales funnel or your review page, okay? Then there's shopping cart abandonment. You know what that is, right? They add to cart and then they leave. Then there's checkout abandonment, okay? This is different than shopping cart. Checkout abandonment is somebody who has actually initiated the checkout. Okay, now the one problem with this in a lot of e-com spaces is people could think this is the same thing. They think shopping cart abandonment and checkout abandonment are the same. Do you think that somebody who maybe adds a product to their cart and then somebody else who adds a product to their cart and then clicks initiate checkout and starts filling out their details, those are two different levels of buyer. Would you guys agree? One of them is, is infinitely more valuable. So why wouldn't you treat them, more, treat them differently and, and address them in a specific way, right? Don't lump them together. Okay, now increasing the performance of any of these four factors will make a dramatic impact on your traffic, on your conversion rate. And what we're not doing here is we're not spending any more money. Okay, how many of you guys also have this thing called a budget? Like, you only have so much money, right? We're not Branson, we don't have all these unlimited budgets. So you have an, an amount of money that you can afford to spend on traffic. And right now, you may want more traffic, but your budget may not allow for that. So let's utilize what you already have, and let's dial it in so that you can actually improve the quality and the conversion rate of your traffic. So we gotta fix the leaks first. I'm a big visuals guy. I'm not a, I'm not a graphics artist, so this is kind of my hack of making a good looking graphic. All right, so we have targeted traffic. We all buy Facebook ads, right? We, we buy me paid media. We dump it into the, our store, which is the start of this pipe. But before it comes out the end as money, look at all the leaks. There's bounce rate, there's product abandonment, there's card abandonment, there's checkout abandonment. All of those things are lost opportunity. Think about it like a water hose, right? You guys have all had a leaky garden hose, right? You turn the water on and you, there's no pressure because it's all leaking out the back or out of, out of all the, the little splits in it, right? Same concept. If you can throw some band-aids on it or just put new pipe in there and solidify it so more people get through each process, you're gonna be a 10 times happier, you're gonna make 10 times more money and you're not gonna spend any more money, okay? These are the things that we focus on in our businesses before we ever consider spending more money on traffic. These things also can take a, what you think is a losing offer, man, my product, nobody wants to buy it, or things like that and turn it into an offer that actually converts. Because it may not be the, the offer, it may not be the issue, it may be that you're leaking too much traffic and not enough people are getting through to, to make it profitable. The good news is there is a solution. You're not gonna like the solution, however, because it's called split and multivariate testing. I just learned how to say multivariate, I actually used to say it some other word because I, I didn't know what it was, but split and multivariate testing is not a, a lot of fun. 
Split testing is complicated. It's totally geek stuff. It is not fun to do, okay? And it's hard because you gotta know what to split test. Split test is when you make a change on a page and you run it against a, an identical or a control page that hasn't changed. So I'm gonna change my headline or I'm gonna change my price and you're gonna run traffic to both pages and see which one converts better. You can only make one change at a time in a split test. So if you have 10 things to test, that means you have at least 10 split tests. And split tests are only valid if you have enough quantity of traffic to make it statistically relevant. So if you get 10 clicks to each one, it means nothing. Okay, so you have to spend a lot of money split testing. How many of you guys know who Ryan Dice is? Digital marketer, right? Good buddy, great company, amazing guy. I love what he and Perry do, and I love how addicted to split testing they are. But look at this. This is, this is old, but $15 million in marketing tests over 3,000 split and multivariate tests. The number's way, way, way beyond that right now. Okay, first of all, split tests are boring. Second of all, they cost money. And third, they take time. I don't have a huge team to do that. I don't want to spend $15 million or even, I don't even want to spend $10,000 on testing, which I've done many, many times. So the reality is on this, who has time for that? That's the whole point of this presentation, guys because I want to give you four easy to implement recovery strategies to, that will take a total, if you're slow, of about five hours and 25 minutes to implement and will boost your business by 184%. Does that sound better than split testing? Absolutely, right? And these are all proven. You know why? Because we've spent years testing and spending all that money doing the split tests and doing these kinds of things. Not, just because I say I don't like doing it doesn't mean I haven't had to do it because there was no way to find the data otherwise, okay? But what I can do now, because we have had so much volume, we've worked on so many different stores with so many different partners with our own stuff and with others, we've seen it across all these different industries. We know what works, okay? So there's some simple tweaks, simple hacks that we can input into your business that will make a dramatic increase, up to basically 184% of boost from the traffic that you're already getting. So I think this is a pretty cool way to kick off a session, right? You're not gonna get some long drawn out thing, you're gonna get some instantly implementable hacks that you can drop into your business right away. So strategy number one is combat the bounce. We gotta kill that bounce rate, okay? So combating the bounce, what is the bounce rate again? Let's just re refresh real quick. It's when someone leaves their site after visiting, okay? They don't do anything. They may not let the page load or they let part of it load and then they bounce, right? Now, there's a lot of factors that can affect your bounce rate. There's a ton of them that can affect your bounce rate. Okay, but a couple of the main ones are your page load. Pingdom and webpagetest.org will tell you your page load speed and how they interact with your site. Now, page load is when you click on like a link to go to your site, how long does it take before the whole thing loads, right? How many of you guys love waiting? No? How many of you guys have ADD? Everybody does now because we all have internet ADD, right? We, if it's not instant, like, we're, we're 40,000 feet in the air in an airplane and the internet goes out or slows down and we get pissed, right? Like, we're in an air, sitting in a chair in the air flying with internet and we're upset because it's not fast. Like, how entitled do we get on about some of this stuff? Well, pay, bounce rate has gone through the roof because of that sense of entitlement that the whole population has, okay? Now, your page load can be fixed in a number of different ways. Page content. Is, it a, is there a lack of congruency with the way they got to your page from the ad or the review page or the link or the email or whatever with what you're saying? Is there a lack of quality? Is, is there, are there spelling or grammatical errors that you know, are so glaring that they just push people off with a trust issue? Is there a visual appeal or lack thereof? Okay, if you are selling to a market where you know, they have a very high aesthetic in terms of artistic nature or a style or certain colors turn them off and you're not utilizing that, people could bounce. Okay, the page is too busy. There is too many things going on. This is a huge problem with Shopify stores. Okay, most themes have like 11 links above the fold or 11 places to click above the fold. How do you know where to click? Okay, you want your buyer to do one thing, right? Click on a product, add it to cart, and buy it. That's what you want them to do. So why are you giving them 75 different ways to, to get confused? Okay? Now, the other thing is that, I'll give you a perfect example. How many of you guys have heard of Organifi? Okay? Organifi, another good, amazing product, Drew Canoli, 
It's a green superfood, okay? Millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars a month. They have, their store converts terribly. He's gonna hate that I said that, but it's true. It, we're, fi we're fixing it. Um, but uh, they, <laughs> he's really gonna hate that. Um, I gotta get over that. <coughs> Excuse me. But anyway, one of the, th the problems is there are 64 different options on the homepage of products in, their, in the product spotlight. Do you know how many products they actually have? Four. They, they did combi combinations. Would you like one bottle and this and this and this? Would you like two bottles and this and this and this? And th it's just ridiculous. And people are like, I don't know what to click on. There should be maybe, how many should there be? Four, okay? So things like that. Now, there's no clear action to take, just like that. What do I do? Now, if these are simple things to fix, like page load. One of the easiest things you can do with page load is simply optimize all the images on your site. And there's tools and there's actually apps that you can add to your Shopify store that will take every image on your site and compress it down super small and re-upload it for you. Uh, I think it's uh, imageoptimizer.net or something like that, but it's, there's, a, there's some in the app store as well. That right there will probably drop your bounce rate by 10 to 15%, okay, without doing anything else. And then if you fix some of the other little things, there's some cool stuff there that can happen. Now, all of these take time to solve. Okay, with an exception of the image thing. That's the one everybody should do because you don't have to do it. It's an automated thing. So make, if you have a Shopify store, make a note literally right now, optimize images on site, all images, including your logo. You know the logo is one of the biggest time sucks on a website, on, on page load? Because what do people do? They pay to have a logo created, right? And when you have a logo made, you have it made so that you can also print it, right? So it's a high DPI. It's very high quality high resolution, which also means it's very big. Well, most people are not techie, so they take that same logo and it says upload logo, they upload the logo. And they're loading a four and a half or five or 10 megabyte logo that's this big on their site when that file should be maybe 15 kilobytes or less. Simple things like that, guys. So make, sure, make a note of that one. But again, most of these things are t take time, take testing, things like that to fix. What I'm gonna give you is a bounce hack to help recover some of these people. Okay, this is instant. You're gonna use exit technology to show an offer when they try to leave. So even if you don't optimize your bounce rate at all, you just say, hey, my bounce rate's 80%, I'm way too lazy to optimize my images, I just don't care enough to get my bounce rate down, which is none of you guys, but I'm just joking. So if you don't wanna do anything, but you still wanna save some of that bounce traffic, you can use exit intent technology. So what, what is this? Exit intent is when you are on a web page and you start to scroll up to the X button or the browser bar and try to leave the site, a pop-up comes up inside the browser. It's not an external pop-up, but it comes up inside the page you're on. Have you guys all seen those before? Okay. They work. They work very, very well. So nine out of 10 times, a lead capture page or with a lead magnet are gonna be your best bet. So some kind of opt-in. Hey, get 10% get off. Hey, get our, our guide to the seven Re, seven body detox things that you need or you know, the seven considerations you need before buying a barbecue. Whatever it is in your niche or market, okay? Some kind of lead capture. Now, people are like, oh, what am I gonna do? If you don't have any idea, just do a discount. You can do a coupon. There's um, Abandoned, what is it, Abandoned Monster? I can't remember what the app is called, but there's one out there um, that is, it's free and it'll automatically create a, instantly generate a coupon for every person that opts in for your store. So if you have no creativity or any other idea, just use that. Okay, so some resources that are non-Shopify specific are bounceexchange.com and then optinmonster and getrooster.com. All three of those work. They're non-Shopify specific, so they work on any platform, but they're basically a lead capture, okay? So an example, this is Zero Shoes. This is Steven Sashin's company. Uh, they're about, mm, they're, they're a several million dollar company. They make those, uh, flat shoes, right? They're all about shoes that you almost can't feel you're wearing because it's better for your feet, zero incline, all that kind of stuff. They're a really great product. Now, they had a big bounce rate. They added this exit offer, which grays out the page you can see, and, and then it pops up saying, hey, get our free report, find out why barefoot, you know, wh what are they hiding? Why are our shoes better and what are other companies hiding? Only 2.5% opted in for the report. Now, for those of you who've ever done list building, how many of you would be excited about a 2.5% opt-in rate? Really? Most people would be like, man, that sucks. Okay, because if I'm doing a list building campaign, and Chris can attest to this, we want 50 to 60 to 75% opt-in rates uh, you know, 
on average, and if it's a really cold traffic, maybe 30%. 2.5% is considered incredibly low. But in this case, it's amazing because it's a, lot, it's, a, it's a recovered lost opportunity. Okay, so bounced traffic, they're gone, right? They're not coming back, but you, had a, you got 2.5% of those people to come back. So you just basically, it's a found money, right? Or found prospect. Does that make sense? Okay, so 2.5% is very low. But it's, and people, a, a lot of our customers actually, and the reason I say this, because they're like, I'm not gonna implement that. It's not worth my time for 2.5%. Okay. Well, 28.3% of the people who opted in on the, the, the bounce traffic that left, purchased. Okay, so now, okay, is it worth it? Well, yeah, because these people were gone. There was no revenue gonna be made from these people. They just cost you money because you paid to have them come to your page and they left, they're gone. Now you recover 2.5% of them and 28% of those people went on to buy. Okay, maybe now you've, you're closer to breaking even on the traffic that you're losing. So it's a huge, huge, huge thing. Anybody you guys know Neil Patel? So Neil, pretty good rock star, amazing content marketer, right? So he, now if you ever go to Neil's site now, there's like 17 of these things. You can never leave his site, it's like insane. Um, but exit pops have doubled Neil's opt-in rate because his whole business model, content marketing, people opt in and then his, the leads get farmed out to some of the different companies that he works with and he gets paid either by the lead or when they turn into a sale. So he, it doubled his opt-in rate, okay? And it gave him a 10% lift in sales from traffic that was already lost. Okay, so this is a very simple, simple thing to implement. Time needed to implement, 20 minutes, if that. Okay, again, I'm being very, very generous here. You could probably do it in, in a few, especially if you use an app, in a coupon app, it literally takes it all the time to search it, install it, activate it, set the percentage, and you're done. It'll integrate with Clavio, it'll integrate with GetResponse, any autoresponder you're using, and boom, you're building this list. And not only are you recovering them as a prospect, some of them are going to buy, but now you can follow up with these people via email, okay? And what else can you do with a list of emails? You can download it and then upload it as a custom audience. So you can, start, you can utilize this stuff many different ways. Okay, that's a little bit more of an advanced thing, but I still throw it out there so at least it's, you're thinking about it. Now, the next strategy is the look again. Okay, this one is all about page abandonment. All right, so product page abandonment is when a visitor views a specific product page and then leaves without adding the product to cart. We all do this, right? Probably a dozen or more times a day. We look at something and we leave, okay? Whether life happened or whatever happened, maybe we just weren't interested or just wasn't the right time, whatever, we leave, all right? We wanna stop that, we wanna get them to come back. So on-site factors as well as life factors can affect this kind of abandonment. It does not mean though that they will not buy. Okay, how many of you guys have ever heard like, no means no, not now, not forever, right? When someone just doesn't buy, does not mean that they're never going to buy or that they're not interested in buying. It just means that something got in the way, right? For whatever reason, whether it was just, hey, I'm busy, I'm just not interested right now, I'm tired, I gotta go to the bathroom, who knows? Does not mean they will not buy. So you want to show it to them again. We've all heard as well, right, that it takes multiple touch points to convert a sale. Five to seven, some, sometimes as many as 12 touch points to get a prospect to eventually convert into a sale, right? Well, in this case, same concept. We just need to get them to see our offer again. Now, the trick is to get them to see the product more than once in, in more than one setting and in more than one location. And setting in terms of like, is it a review? Is it a product page? Is it on a website? Is it on Amazon? Is it on a retargeting ad? You wanna just blanket them with it, okay? So, retargeting keeps products top of mind. Retargeting is awesome, right? It, it's like legal stalking. Okay, and that's why I love it, because you know, it's cool to stalk people. And you can just follow them around. You never, we, what we used to do, a funny side note, um, when this time when uh, Chris was talking about Don Wilson, uh, we used to, back then, we used to actually set up ads that would only show to one specific person back when we could use IDs, their Facebook ID to target ads. So we would stalk each other with ads because we were dorks, you know, but it would be, it, it's kind of creepy when you're like, I, I know what you did, you know, I see what you're doing, or you call them out by name. So retargeting gets in your face, and so some resources for retargeting. Perfect Audience is my favorite. It's a multi-network retargeting platform. It's free to sign up for. 
Um, they actually give you an ad credit when you start. It allows you to build retargeting lists inside of their platform that can be leveraged on Facebook, leveraged on Twitter, leveraged on their web network, and on their mobile network, even on app installs. Adroll.com, another network. Okay? These are, these, there's tons of retargeting networks, but these are the ones that we use. Sitescout.com. And then Facebook retargeting. Now, most people are only, if they're using any retargeting, they're only using Facebook retargeting. In our companies, we drop five pixels for five different retargeting platforms. We're retargeting across five different networks at all time. Because every time you add another network, you expand the reach. Okay, because each network has its own network of sites that they can show ads on. So every time you add a network, you add more ability to reach your customer wherever they go. The ads are the same, they're just going out to more places. Okay? So an example of this, Teespring, t-shirt stuff, right? So you go to the Teespring page, you see the shirt, and then you, get re you don't buy, you get retargeted with the exact shirt. This is automatic, okay? This is something that Teespring does automatically with no, with no setup required. Audimute, okay, this is a, a sound deadening panel company. We were building out our, our studio in Reno and we had to get some sound panels. And so I started looking at all these sites and this thing started following me around on Facebook. It's just a, a it, 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 this is not even good retargeting because it's just retargeting the company itself. I certainly did not look at a audio panel that was a picture of a, a sunset over a bed or whatever it was. That was not what I was looking at. I was looking at those ugly egg crate type things that you put on a studio wall. If they were smart, they would have retargeted me with exactly the product that I was looking at, okay? Simple things, but this works better than nothing. Version done is better than version none, right? So at least they took action. I guarantee you they're still profitable with this retargeting ad, even though it's nonspecific. LegalZoom, even these guys who get nothing right, these guys are the worst marketers in the world, okay? And almost all of us still use them because it's, it's so bad it still works apparently, right? So LegalZoom, they hit you with, they, they even got it right. We were looking at LLC stuff and then they retargeted me with a LLC formation page to get me to come back. The fun thing was I clicked on it and I went to their page for creating a will. So part of it wasn't work. So at least get your pages right if you're gonna do this, okay? And then Zappos, okay? These guys are rock stars. I was look, I mean, my wife was looking at these shoes and this is actually a true story. She really was looking at these shoes. I was teaching a, a training on retargeting and my wife came in the room it was a, on a webinar and she stood there. I didn't know what she was doing. And she stood there and she goes, afterwards, she goes, now I know how that works. I wondered how all this stuff worked. I'm like, oh, okay, didn't think anything of it. So the next day or a couple days later, I am at home. I'm on my home computer and I'm w w working. And all of a sudden, these high heels pop up on Facebook. They pop up on Huffington Post. They pop up on, and I'm like, what? I, I know I didn't, I'd never even seen these shoes before, but they started following me around. And I'm like, my wife has her own computer, but what is she doing? She's retargeting me to get me to like, hey, honey, I want you to buy these for me, <laughs> right? And she goes, hey, did you see those spiked shoes? I'm like, oh my God. So hashtag, don't teach your wife retargeting, okay? <laughs> but anyway, th that works really well, okay? It's the exact shoe, it's the exact thing, and I did not buy those shoes. We went to Tory Burch instead, so I still lost. Okay, so how important is retargeting? Okay, so retargeted ads led to a 1,046% increase in branded search. This is when people, now that they've started to see you more, they're more inclined to do a search, whether it's on Facebook or on Google or Bing or whatever else for your brand, for your product. Okay, so a 1,000% lift. Websites see a 726% lift in site visitation, meaning that much more people start coming back to your site after four weeks of continuous retargeting. And retargeting can lead to a conversion rate increase of as much as 132%. Totally worth doing. It is also the cheapest converting traffic you will ever buy because it's targeted. It's so much targeted. It's so much smaller, but it's so much better. Time needed to implement this, I say two hours. If you have to think of an ad creative, get a product image, hook it all up, sign up for multiple networks if you're going to do it that way. But at the very least, use Facebook. If you're already set up there, at least get your Facebook retargeting set up at a product page level. Super easy to do. And you can do cool things on Facebook 
with uh, Shopify and you do dynamic placement retargeting where all you do is install the app and whatever pages or products, it'll show them in sequence. I mean, it's so easy to do now. Technology has made it a no-brainer and to be in business for yourself now. It's so easy. Now, number three is reconvert, okay? We're gonna try to get these people back. We're gonna buy them, or get them, buy them through traffic to come back and do what we want them to do. So the effective global shopping cart conversion rate is, or abandonment rate is 68%, okay? Which is pretty high. Now, cart abandonment, again, is when someone adds a product to the shopping cart in their store, in a, e-commerce store, then leaves without clicking the checkout button or going to any of the checkout details, okay? Again, we've all done this. Some of us do it just like as an ad for later. Some of us do it because and life happens or whatever else. Four main reasons, though, of why people abandon the shopping cart. Unexpected cost. This is the, the big one, and it's usually shipping related, okay? If, or, if, or if the product costs more or if you add a bundle or things like that. The, when any, anytime someone has a surprise pop up in a purchase that they are not aware is coming, it usually causes a major disconnect. And the last thing you want is to have a disconnect during your buyer's checkout process, right? So be very upfront with everything. You can put shipping estimators and calculators and stuff like that on your product listing pages so that they can know what's coming and what's gonna happen and how it's going to work, okay? Browsing, they got distracted, things like that, it happens. No guest checkout. This is a huge one. Actually, there's four strategies, but I think there's actually five now that I mentioned this, so I just can't count. So I'm gonna throw a bonus strategy at you guys in a second. So remind me if I don't talk about it. I think I will. High price requires consideration. This is a big one, especially if you're selling more expensive products. Things $70 to $100, $200, 300 $400 or more, right? It's not an impulse purchase, so it's something they have to think about or do I really need this? Do I really want this? Is my wife gonna flip out on me? Or is my husband gonna flip out on me? Whatever, right? So, shopping cart abandonment is an $18 billion per year problem, and it's getting bigger because more and more stores are coming online. And abandonment, you're never gonna get rid of it. But some of that is your money, and it's lost money. So how about we recover a little bit of it, or a lot of it, right? So let's get them back to the cart. There's two ways to get them back to the cart, and now we're gonna get into geek talk. DCR, dynamic cart retargeting, okay? Sounds complicated, but there's apps that do it for you. Basically, it's just retargeting them with whatever product was in their cart. DFU, dynamic email follow-up. This is basic email cart abandonment. Hey, come back, right? You forgot your product. If they are a new customer, meaning they just come to your site for the first time and they don't have an account, typically you don't have their email address. So you can't hit them with DFU, you can hit them with dynamic cart retargeting. And if they do have an account or they're an existing customer and you already have their email address and you know how to, who they are, then you can hit them with dynamic cart retargeting as well as dynamic email follow-up. So on it, how many of you guys know on it? Big, big supplement and you know, health company. They have their own like brand of kettlebells and all kinds of crazy stuff. Huge company. The MMA guys talk about it all the time. Um, this is something that they do, and it's terrible. So no guest checkout option. I fall into this category. What does this mean? 14% of people will abandon the checkout process, the shopping cart itself, if they have to create an account in order to check out. How many of you guys have ever done that? Think about it. I do it every time. I, I, it pisses me off. I don't, I want to check out. I'm looking for a fast buying experience. I'm spoiled because of Amazon one click, right? I want to be able to check out. And I feel that it's intrusive and invasive of a company, and I, I, don't, I don't logically think about this as I'm doing it, but after reflecting on it, I understand that I find it invasive that they're making me create an account like I'm going to keep coming back as another customer before I can even give them my money. I don't want it to work that way. But the other flip side of it is if after the checkout is completed, if they ask me to just create a password and I'll have an account, I do it every time and I don't care because it happened in the right sequence. So, so many people force people to make, create an account so that you get their customer details and I'm all for that. But is it worth a 14% loss in sales? Not to me because you can still 
reverse it and get that back and still get that cart created, still get that account created after they complete the checkout. It's a standard feature on an e-commerce store. You literally have to check or uncheck a button. So you want to make sure there is a guest checkout or an express checkout option. You could have the button where it's like express checkout, create an account. Or you could just have it go into checkout. That's my preferred option. So there's no guest checkout. This is actually the fifth strategy that I was uh, alluding to, was the no guest checkout option. So if you don't have a guest checkout, you're losing sales as much as 14%. Okay, time needed to implement, five minutes. Why? Because you do have to turn on your computer, you have to get on the internet, you have to log into your store, and you have to click a checkbox. So it takes a long time to do, it's very technical. But I'm sure everybody in here can handle that. Okay. So this is dynamic cart retargeting in action. Okay, so ultimatesack.com. Not the in most interesting name for a website. Um, and the, <laughs> the first example we did of this was with a blue sack. <clears throat> and uh, one of my staff was like, you should probably change that. And I'm like, I don't get it. And I'm like, oh, crap. Okay, so ultimatesack.com sells big, giant sacks. And I was looking at it. And I was like, oh, cool. Okay, so then I left. We added a red one to cart. <coughs> excuse me. Added a red one to cart. Excuse me, guys. Let me grab a drink real quick. <coughs> I'm sorry to blast your ears. And what do they do with their ad? I added the red product to the cart, I have abandoned the cart, and they hit me with retargeting with a red big giant sack. Okay, and it could have just been a blue one or a green one or, what, or a generic one, but I was like, man, is that, in, did I get lucky or is it intentional? So I went back and did it a couple different times with incognito browsers and different things, and the same image was there. They just had their Photoshop guy change the color to mat, and they matched it up with every color you added to the cart. This is dynamic because it's the actual product that I added to the cart, okay? Now, you may not have variants where that's not a problem, but the point of the example is you want to show the exact product that's in their cart. You don't want to just say, hey, you have items in your cart. That's what so many people do. What, what store, what items? I don't know. Show me what I got. Show me the product. Okay, so that's the, re the retargeting ad. My clicker is still being goofy. Sorry, guys. So Right Channel Radios. This site just sold, okay? Um, this, uh, this is e-commerce fuel podcast. If you guys have ever listened to that, this was his, Andrew Udarian's company. So this is dynamic email follow-up, okay? So we added the Cobra 29 LX thing, CB radio, whatever it is, to our cart. We left. We had an account. And you can see it said, hey, Andrew, you left something behind. Okay, so it actually shows them what they left in their cart via email, calls them out by name, gives them a link to finish their order in the, in their, straight to their cart, okay? This is the email side of it. So if you have their email address, you can do this and the retargeting, doubling up your effectiveness of your recovery campaigns. So it, it, the visual HTML emails work best. You can do it with a straight text email, but the visual aspects of email work so much better with physical products because it reminds it, puts it in their face. Oh yeah, that's cool. Okay, show them the product, show them your cart. If there's multiple items in their cart, show all the items. Okay, we're not clicking. At all. Clicker guys. Okay. Whoa, 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 go back, go back, go back. Or I go back. Okay, let's just sit right there. Okay, stay. Okay, all right, so Build, Grow, Scale, our company. We have a dynamic cart retargeting campaign running using Infusionsoft. So the point of this example is to show that it can work with other things as well. So this is a hybrid funnel with a digital product front end. So those of you doing affiliate marketing for regular products or doing info marketing or doing a hybrid model, which I highly encourage where you're leveraging both digital and physical products, you can do this. So we, ha we saw a 13.33% boost in revenue simply by using dynamic cart retargeting, okay? All it was was a retargeting ad. Now you look at it, this, this is a tr uh, uh, the app, the tracker that we were using. So you can see we had 360 abandoned carts during this time period. 
$18,655 in lost sales. We were able to recover 48 of those of the 360. So not a huge number, but it was still an extra $2,400 in our pocket that we didn't have before. Now, you look at, I lost 18, but I gained 24. You're like, man, it's not that exciting. But the reality is that was, you were never going to get any of that money back. Those were gone. Okay, so we still recovered 24. But I bet most people are still thinking about the 2,400. You know what? I don't even care about that. Do you know what I care about? 48 new customers. Because I know that in this business, my average lifetime value of a customer is over $1,000. So what do I care about? The front end? or the fact that I got 48 new customers pixeled and emails and in my system with product that I can now continue to sell to for the, the lifetime of them as a customer. That's what's important. That's why you do this stuff. Business is a long-term game, okay? Quick wins, yeah, they're cool, but don't focus on the dollar value. Focus on also what the long-term value of it is to your business. So the time needed to implement this, about two hours, okay? to think it all out, maybe write the emails, get the pictures, do the formatting. You could do it faster, but about two hours, okay? Number four is the win back. Okay, so technically this should say number five because we talked about guest checkout as well as dynamic and email follow-up. But the win back, okay? So the win back is all about checkout abandonment. These are your best people. Okay, these are the people who are most likely to convert because they actually started checking out, right? They started filling out their payment details. They had their credit card in hand and then the baby woke up. You know, life happened, boss walked in the room, internet died, couldn't check out on the cell phone, what, whatever. Something popped up, okay? These are the highest likelihood of converting to sale, most likely to buy. All you have to do is recover them because they were going to buy and something stopped them. So they may only need a small nudge and they come back. So we use a win back campaign to bring these people back to life. Even if they never submitted their information, this is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets ninja-y-ish stuff, right? Okay. So we talked about the whole guest checkout option, right? Where you don't, if you don't, if it's a new customer and you don't make them do it, create a account, you don't have their email. Not necessarily. So the win back, this is in the, the most advanced of the strategies. Certain platforms can use it. Sometimes you, you may not be able to yet, but definitely make note of it. And as soon as you're able to in your business, implement it because it's amazing. Okay. So it's an automated, automatically triggered email campaign that uses sequential follow-up to recover the purchase. What the hell did I just say? Okay. All right, so it's an email campaign. So it's a series of emails that are automatically triggered when the person does, hits the checkout page, starts filling out their details, but does not complete their purchase. Sequential mean that it happens in a specific order, okay? So your emails are linked. They're not just random emails. They build on each other, right? So it builds up to a bigger impact to try to get them to come back. Now, the follow-up sequence includes four main emails, each with its own angle. The first email is the reminder email, okay? This is, hey, we, I saw that you started to check out, you know, you didn't complete the purchase, you know, did something get, the life happen? No worries, here's a link straight back to your checkout with all your details still, still in the cart. Cool, we've all seen the emails like that before, right? The next one is incentive number one. So th this goes out later, and it's like, hey, notice you were gonna check out, you didn't finish, I already sent you one email, you know, I don't want you to miss out on this product that sells fast or whatever else, so hey, let me help you get over the hump. I know, you, I know we're, we're new in our relationship together, so how about I give you a 10% discount to test us out, and you know, I know you'll love it. Okay, there's email number one, two. The next one is incentive two, stacking the cool. All right, hey, I gave you 10% off, you still didn't take action. All right, you drive a hard bargain, I'm sorry, you're, you're way better at sales than I am, I'll give you free shipping too. Okay, why? because I want the customer, okay? If you can afford to do it, do it. Okay, maybe you can't. Maybe your incentive number two is say, hey, I'll, all right, from 10, I'll bump it to 15%. Okay, you can do all these different things, very simply. And then scarcity is the last play. Hey, you know, it's it, we're gonna have to put this, I'm holding this item for you. It's our, one of our best sellers though, so I'm gonna have to put it back into inventory and you're gonna lose your chance. 
When this sells out, we usually, it takes us 60 or 90 days to get it back in stock. Whatever the, whatever the scarcity angle is that you can play, use it. The thing about scarcity, we've all been in the IM space, the internet marketing to make money space. What do you hate about scarcity? You hate fake scarcity, don't you? I hate it with a passion. So be real. You, this is, these people are not jaded internet marketers, right? They're just consumers. You don't have to use fake stuff on them. Just be real with it. Hey, I'm gonna have to put it back in inventory and you're gonna miss out, okay? And this discount, I can't offer it any longer. You know, my manager says I can only do this for 48 hours. Whatever it is, make the discount go away. Use scarcity and you're stacking the thing. Reminder, incentive one, incentive two, and scarcity. So by the end of it, you've hit them with three different angles, or actually four different angles, but three different like intense angles to get them to try to convert. Notice what I did not do there. I did not give them something for free. I did not give them an incentive on the very first email. This is what everybody does. And all these gurus are teaching, hey, hit them with a, with a card abandonment email and give them an immediate discount. Or before they even leave their site, before they even leave the checkout, give them a discount. Okay, you don't know why they're leaving. They, didn't, they're not, they may not be leaving because they need a discount. They may be leaving because life happened. So why don't you try to get the full price sale first and then get the, give them the discount? Because now, it's actually, it's, now you don't look desperate, okay? You, you actually look like, hey, here's your chance. And then you're gonna be like, oh, you know what? And you be conversational with it. You talk to them as if you're a friend. Hey, I get it. You don't trust me yet. That's cool. I'll give you a discount because I know you're going to love the product and I, I stand behind it. You're going to be happy with it. We're a small company, but I understand, you know, first impressions are key. So to help make it easier for you, I'll give you a 10% discount on your first order. You're not going to be, if you were the consumer, would you be pissed about an email like that? No. You'd be like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's nice of them to do that. You'd probably even comment on it, right? So an example, peak design. Okay. They do some like camera mount equipment thing. Okay. You add the product to the cart, you get the first email which says still looking around. Question, right? Shows them the product, go back to the cart. And then a, few, a little bit later, you get the would 5% off help. They did not lead with a discount. They're like, hey, you still haven't purchased yet. Would it be cool if I gave you 5% off? Would that help you make up your mind? Maybe, it actually does. Automated win back campaign gave them a 12% boost in sales in 30 days. Would you guys like a 12% boost in sales over 30 days? Heck yeah, right? And it's automated. It's set and forget. You write these emails once, set up the campaign, and it happens automatically. You don't ever have to touch it again unless you want to change your promotion, okay? I'm a big, big believer in anything that you can do that automates the selling process because you can't be everywhere at once. And if you don't have automation in your sales processes, you're gonna be leaving so much money on the table that you're always gonna be hand to mouth with your business, okay? You need automated marketing in your business in order to help make it a more fleshed out and sustainable business model. Office Depot, go buy that really expensive soap, add it to our cart. They say, hey, here's your cart, you forgot this. And then they say for scarcity, hey, tick top, your cart's about to expire. Okay, they're not saying, hey, it's selling out. We're never going to have any more of this antibacterial soap. You'll never be able to get it again. This is the last bottle on the planet. They're not saying any of that crap. They're just saying, hey, we're going to put it back in inventory. Your cart's going to expire. It drives sales. Okay, so this is American Defense Outfitters. This is a digital company in the survival space. Survival slash gun slash all kinds of stuff. Conservative older Republicans. Okay, you can see here, 402 abandoned carts, $72,000 in lost cart revenue from people who abandoned. We were able to recover 45 sales and $8,000 in revenue, okay? Not quite 72, but again, 45 new customers. Okay, all from a, some automated emails that I didn't have to do any work for. Okay, we set the emails up, 15 minutes, it go, the first one goes out, it says, hey, did you forget? The second email at 24 hours says, would you like free shipping? Would that help? And then 48 hours, how about 15%? And then the fourth email that goes out at 36 hours is your 15% discount is expiring. Four simple emails, completely automated, set up once and forgotten about, that brought us another $8,000 in sales and 45 new customers. And you know what? I didn't have to think about it. 
How many of you guys would like to make money and gain customers without thinking about it? Okay, this is critical. This is easy. This is why business is so much easier, why the le playing field has been leveled now. Because you don't have to have a staff of people, hey, I noticed you tried to check out calling people. Nobody wants that. This is all automated. Using the win back campaign has resulted in a 15%, as much as a 15%, increase in recovered revenue for both us and our clients. Okay? It has worked without fail across the board. Now, the time needed to implement this is three hours. Why? Because it's a little bit more technical. Got to write the emails, got to structure them, got to figure it out, got to figure out what app you're going to use. The cool thing is if you are using platforms like ClickFunnels or Infusionsoft or uh, not Shopify, unfortunately, yet. They're working on it. Um, or some of the other, other store platforms. Some of the WooCommerce things can do it. You have a, a, there's a technology available to you using Ajax code called Intent Technology. And what it does is as you type in your email address or your information, the, fee, the, the website stores it. And so if you ha have the email field as the first level, it's going to be able to capture that email address as you type it in. So in our checkout pages, we always, and I'm going to show you a case study in a second where we didn't do that, but we always now have the email field as the very first field in the, in the checkout form. Because if someone's going to abandon the checkout form, it's usually a couple fields in. It's after they've already gotten down into the, the payment details or whatever. So the intent technology, as they type in, you know, Tanner is awesome at gmail.com, we're capturing that. They never submitted it, but we captured it, we added them to our list, and now if they don't complete the checkout, we can send out these emails. So this is how when you've, like if anybody ever abandoned one of my products, which you better not, but if you did, you're going to get an email that as you started checking out, it said, hey, I noticed you didn't complete the checkout. What's up? And you're like, how did you get my email? Well, that's how. It's intent technology. It's capturing it. ClickFunnels does it automatically. Some of these other platforms do it automatically. There's some plugins and apps and things you can do. Again, it's an advanced step. It's not something you're going to be able to do yourself. It's something that either, if it's not an app, you're going to have to have someone code it in. So it's an advanced step that is awesome when you are ready for it, okay? Or if your platform allows for it natively like ClickFunnels does. So with that, I, can, I don't even have to have their email address. Now I can retarget them because I, I dropped a pixel on the page, and I've got their email address because they're going to probably finish filling out the first field before they abandon, right? So the case study. This is, I wanted to get a weird one for you guys that was just out of the norm because you're like, oh, this will, people always say, this won't work for my business or my product's different or my service is different. So how many of you guys own a hotel? I don't either, right? There's <laughs> one guy that he's like, I don't own a hotel. Uh, I don't own one either, but I, I have worked with one, uh, several of them. So the Lex Hotel, they're a boutique hotel. We used a tool called Logic and we were using a win back campaign. They hadn't gotten around to letting us set up, give us access to their pages to set up the dynamic cart retarget or dynamic cart retargeting or anything like that, but we got the email thing set up. So, with hotels, there's innate scarcity built into it when someone's checking for a hotel, right? What's that scarcity? Well, your trip's coming up, right? You've got to get a hotel before your trip. And then the other thing is, everybody knows hotel prices get more expensive the closer the dates are to when you actually book your room, right? So, Hotels have a limited window and buyers are, are a little bit more primed to take action quickly than in some other products. So this uses intent technology that allows the win back campaign to start. Now, if you looked at here, the email form is way down the page. Stupid move, because we just use their basic checkout. Once we fixed it, we moved it to the top and we got even more people on the, on the campaign. So these stats, or even with it being that far down. If it was up at the top of the page, you'd have even more recoveries because you'd get more data, right? You guys with me on that so far? Okay. So dynamic email follow-up. They, they come here to check out and they abandon the checkout. Okay, so with hotels, price is the number one objection. So with, and time is of the essence, so with this win back campaign, because we know that time is of the essence and price is the number one objection, we immediately hit them with a discount. Okay, so I'm breaking the rule I just told you about because in this case, it makes more sense. So why did I tell you the rules and then I broke it? Because I want you guys to realize that there are no rules, right? 
there's only guidelines and best practices and things like that, but there's always going to be something that changes. No matter what I say, no matter what Chris says, no matter what Jim or Don or any of the other speakers that you're going to hear from, whatever they say, they're all guidelines. There's always going to be a case where it doesn't apply or it should be changed or something should be tweaked. So, you know, don't take it as like sacrosanct, like it's the only way it can be done. Now, this email looks god-awful. It offends me. But this is what the hotel wanted it to look like. So we worked with it, okay? So we offered them a discount, okay, on the first email saying, hey, you tried to check out or you started to look at a room but you didn't book your thing. How about a discount? I know hotels in New York are expensive and we want to earn your business. Let's start with us putting our best foot forward by giving you a discount, okay? The win back campaign has resulted in a 10.4% boost in rankings. Okay, so you can see they, with the, this is with the email at the bottom of the form, so we didn't, people were abandoning even before they got there, but we had 676 abandons, $145,000 in lost revenue, which would make you, which this is one of the best selling features if you actually owned a card abandonment technology, you just show a company how much money they're losing and they can't wait to hire you. Um, but that's kind of sick, like, oh, 145 grand. Okay, well, we were able to recover 15,000 which they were not excited about. And this actually blew my mind because hotels are, you think that with that kind of money flowing around, they should be smart, okay? And th they didn't care about the 70 customers. They, they were like, man, the revenue sucks. I'm like, you got 70 people coming to stay in your ridiculously overpriced boutique hotel in New York where you have a restaurant, you have a bar, you have a gift shop, and you know that every customer who comes into your hotel spends more than just their room, right? How many of you guys have ever bought a drink at a bar in a hotel? Oh, right? How many of you guys have ever bought more than one drink at a bar at a hotel, right? Yes, you spend more money. So the average value of a customer is way higher than the booking. That's why a lot of hotels will actually lose money on the room because they know they're gonna average it out and make it up elsewhere. This company didn't see that initially, but they're very happy they did because now their, their customer value is like, I think they average about an extra $600 in spend for every customer that comes through the door at their hotel. So, all from a simple email follow-up system with only two emails, okay? Nothing even crazy. How many of you guys can write two simple emails? Absolutely, and it's a lot easier of a sell than trying to get someone to book an overpriced hotel in New York, okay? So you don't have to worry about that. Your businesses are much, much easier to convert than they are. So, with the five, not four, strategies that we've just covered, we, have we spent any more money on traffic? No. Have we spent really any more money at all, really? No, now there may be a marginal increase because you had to buy an app or a software or something to make something happen or you know, pay someone if you really can't write an email to help you write an email, but really there's no real cost, okay? And everything we've set up is automated, ongoing. So in five hours and 25 minutes, I've shown you five techniques that can give you a 184% boost in your business. And once set up, that will continue indefinitely because every new customer coming into your every new click every time you buy traffic all these pieces are already in place to try to maximize everything else you do and that's irrespective of any actual conversion rate optimization any bounce rate optimization anything else that you do on your store or if you get better at buying ads and you get more targeted traffic so this is a geometric increase geomet that's not the right word Exponential increase, let's just call it exponential. That could be, that sounds cooler. Exponentially bigger, maybe a little bit smaller or bigger, I don't know. It's just a, it's a cooler thing, increase to everything you do on the front end of your business. As you feed your business, everything will grow by whatever you grew your business by when you first implemented this because everything just continuously gets better over time. Does that make sense? How many of you guys learned something? Good stuff?